Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to process roses. These roses are from a grocery store. Normally I do not buy roses or flowers from a grocery store, period. I prefer to support local florists and my wholesalers, but sometimes that happens. These, these are from my husband. So we have, <laughs> we have roses today and I wanted to show you how to process them. We're gonna start by doing the obvious, which is by taking off the packaging. The variety that we have here, this red one is called Explorer. This is a gorgeous, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. This is a gorgeous rose that a lot of florists like to use in the industry um, in lieu of the popular Freedom Rose. This is another really good red rose that can easily reflex, which that's another tutorial coming soon, but reflexing is when you manually peel back individual petals until you get this incredible, massive, open, gorgeous, incredible. <laughs> you get the point. That's reflexing. That's another video. But this Explorer Rose is an amazing option next to Freedom if you need a good red rose to reflex. And then this other one that we have here is Sweet Elegance. It's very pretty. Peachy, peachy, peachy pink. There's a lot of green calyx on the outside, which when you take those off, it's gonna to totally change the color of the rose. Yeah, so that's kind of a personal option personal preference rather. Um, personal preference, if you want to change the look of a rose when you have something like this, when it's so kind of, uh, it's got that kind of ombre, ombre look to it. You can, yeah, so you get the, the, the most of the color concentrated in here and if you wanted to clean off these outer petals that's going to totally change the look of your rose and maybe that's something to look for when you are shopping. Knowing your roses and how they change when you strip off some of these outer layers. Unless it's a solid color rose then what you see is what you get. But sometimes when you clean a rose it can totally change the look. We have a very vintage look with these calyxes. You've got this kind of patinaed green on the outside. It's super gorgeous. And uh, yeah, I love it. You can either keep it like that. I mean, I will take off the most damaged calyxes out here because I want to, or you can just go further if you really want only the most saturated pink part of the rose. Totally depends on what you're doing and uh, yeah, if it fits your look, whether you're going for something kind of minimalist and clean or something a little bit more vintage and romantic. All right, so now that we got all of that out of the way, we're going to process, woohoo! And we have our base. These are 50 centimeter, though it looks like they cut them down to be maybe even 40 centimeter. So I grab a base that is double, nope, half the height, half the height, and uh, two thirds of the, of the way full with warm, almost hot water with the correct amount of floral food. Are we done moving? No, we're not. <laughs> so yeah, we got our base. This is about half, half the height. That's good for a solid amount of roses. I think here, are these 24 centimeters or just 12? I think these are 12 some bunches. So this in a, 
Traditionally at a flower market, you buy, unless they are garden roses, your conventionally grown roses, Ecuadorian roses, come in 24 stem bunches. And uh, yeah, you can put in this small vase a good solid amount of 24, maybe even more. I will leave the size of the vase that I used in the description below. I did not measure it yet. Uh, that's helpful to you for a 40 centimeter rose. I find when processing flowers, the, the vase is, and in design of course, that the vase is a really, really, really important factor in how the flowers feel, how they open up, and uh, yeah, just generally how they sit in a vase. Everything I do is designed. I'm not like, not thinking about these things. I'm always thinking about how I can maximize the flower's life and its expression in, in every which way I can. And so, even though that sounds kind of silly or corny, it's true. Having uh, the right size base will help them open up and flourish. <laughs> so, <clears throat> there we are with that. Now, I typically, when I'm reflexing roses, which is not the video today, but just for the sake of this video anyways, I will strip off all of the foliage and very gently knock off any of the thorns that are on the rose. If it's not a reflex rose and I need some greenery for my design, I will go in and take off or leave I should say leave, I guess it depends on um, where the foliage is growing on the rose. But generally speaking, I would leave, if the, if the foliage comes up this high, I would probably leave, if you measure an entire stem, this kind of one third of here, I would leave that and strip down the rest and definitely make sure that you want to strip off all of the greenery that would be submerged in water. So if you need greenery for your design, leave on, if I remember correct, it's usually the top two kind of laterals of foliage here, top two, maybe the second tier down. So boom, we got that. And then I do a nice long, cut. The long cut is to create more surface area for the rose to drink more water and it also helps keep the rose long. I don't cut at a blunt edge here because it makes your rose shorter and there's less surface area for the rose to drink. So that is really critical. That's, a, that's one of the biggest things to practice when you're learning how to use a florist knife. Um, yeah, so just kind of, that's what basically I'm dragging the knife gently and swiftly to create a long cut. And uh, it basically doesn't, I don't really take any length off of the stem, unless, unless I need to, uh, but generally speaking, you're gonna be buying your, your roses by length, so if you need them uh, to be long, you're gonna wanna keep them long, and when you cut, you're just gonna drag that knife, and then it hits basically right at the, the natural end of the stem there. Yes. Sometimes you'll be able to feel too that foliage is just not that strong. Like it seems to be falling off the rose. Go ahead and take those right off because they will fall off anyways and just create murk in your water and bacteria and you don't want that. And also it'll take energy where it could otherwise be going to the bloom. So it seems like this bunch, they're actually very weak foliage. I'm not designing with them with any greens today, so uh, so yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and take all of that off. 
Now, the calyx are guard petals. They're what grow when the rose is growing to protect this kind of like softer, more, more um, delicate inside of the rose. And depending, this is also personal preference, design, aesthetic preference. Um, you can either leave those on or take them off. For my designs, I take them off. I want the rose looking as clean as possible. I just want to focus on super, super perfect, beautiful center. And just gently, without making any cuts on the stem itself, You're just gonna want to gently kind of knock off. And once you get the hang of your florist knife, you'll become more comfortable with that and you'll be able to sense that feeling. That sneeze was my cat, Marcus. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're gonna wanna be really gentle with that because if you're making accidental cuts or incisions into the into the stem you're creating air and that is going to decrease the life of the flower so really watch out for that when you're cleaning thorns off you don't want little cuts and nicks and holes in the stem especially if it's above water if it's in water that's okay because it's likely that by the time you put it in water that hole will have closed or st continue to stay open and will actually drink through that hole. But generally speaking, you're gonna wanna be pretty cautious of that and uh, delicate. You're just kind of like knocking. These roses did have no thorns, which I have no idea how they did that. I am seeing these like little nubs so I wonder if in a strange way they somehow bred them to be like that. There's like these weird little nubs where it looks like thorns normally would be. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of curious why, why they're like that. But so there's nothing to show you there as far as uh, thorn removal goes. And it also looks like that on these roses. Gosh, I wonder if they're somehow breeding them for grocery stores that way. That seems really strange. Uh, yeah, so... So these are the calyx. They're much harder and more damaged than the inside part of the rose, and it definitely does add a really interesting texture to the outside of the rose so for that reason you may want to key them or you may want to take them off i definitely at least take off the ones that are damaged and will look noticeably gross <laughs> for lack of a better word uh, in my arrangement and uh, yeah a lot of people go a little bit further so side by side again kind of a preference thing I think it adds a little bit more dimension but you can also see how different they look. And also, because this is a grocery store rose, you see how these veins are so prominent? That means that this rose is a little bit older and dehydrated. So it's, that means it's been out of water a lot longer um, than it would like. So. That's another indicator of freshness. Okay, so now onto these other ones. 
there's no thorns on either of these to show, but yeah, you basically just long drag, cut. These greens are not strong either. So I'm just taking those right off. Okay, now to show you the calyx on these, and I'll show you a couple because each rose in these look really different. But you can see the rose as it is here. And then once you start taking some of those damaged outer petals off, it really starts to change the look of the rose. Now we have more of a clean peach blush. And I just blew on it to help it open a little bit better so you can see that. That's a damaged petal. I would take that off too. Totally different rose. But that would be how some That would be how some florists would do it. They would take off a lot of those petals and though focus iPhone. Yeah, I mean, you can see how beat up that looks compared to the one that we cleaned and that is why we clean them. It makes them look really fresh and really happy and Customers are not going to want to see all of that damage. Again, these are grocery store roses. These are looking a lot more damaged than they might if you get them from a wholesaler. But still, you're going to have some of that damage going on. And uh, again, depending on your preference, take them off, leave them on. It's totally your choice. It's your aesthetic. It's your choice your body, your choice. I think it looks like a, just as like a concept, I think it looks amazing. Like this is life, this is, this thing is living and that amazes me. And look at how it looks. It came out of the earth, it's looking banged up and that's quite all right. I would clean these up if I had them on my vanity. So I'll show you this one now, what that's gonna look like cleaned up. It's, it's pretty amazing, I mean, you can see like how deep the damage can go on these so you gotta kind of make a point at got to make a decision at some point uh to keep some of it so that you have a good looking rose there but yeah before and after pretty different it's a different rose let's do another one
So once you have your roses processed, by the way, this size vase and the size roses that I have, it seems like I could fit about 50 roses, or maybe even 75, but I think if you're needing them to open, probably about 50 roses would be good in this size base. Otherwise you can kind of just let them splay out so that they open a little bit. I get the feeling that these really are not going to open that much. These Explore roses are already pretty soft <coughs> and open. So yeah, once we're done processing, We go ahead and shake our floral life finishing touch. Give it a good spritz. Just kind of give it a rotation for an even coverage. Make sure that I'm getting the back side. I want these <coughs> to be hydrated, properly hydrated, especially if they're coming from a grocery store. You know they've been through a lot more than your wholesaler. In terms of finishing touch, you want a light mist on it. You don't want it fully saturated per se, and you're gonna want to, when you are spraying, hold it at least 20, not sorry, 12 inches away. And rotate as you go. If you have a lazy season, that helps to turn your base. I have a marble one here, but it's underneath the table right now. I don't really need it. But a Lazy Susan helps a lot for design and for processing. These, There's a nice layer. There's little droplets. She's looking gorgeous, and I know that they're gonna stay nice and hydrated and lock in all of that moisture. Cool. Well, I hope this was informative. I hope that you learned something and I'm really excited to make another one to show you when I have roses that have thorns because processing roses with thorns is uh, an entirely different thing, a little bit of a different topic. And I'm gonna want to show you how to do that so that you do it properly. So I'll make another video on that, but for now, here's how to process roses. Thank you for watching, I hope it helped. If you have any questions, leave your comments or questions below and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.